Jordan with AB Friendly Company and welcome to the Underground Meadery. It is January 21st, 2017. We're getting into more advancement on our yeast mix. Uh, the last segment you saw, we saw us use four different yeasts to see how it kind of blew up. Uh, the next thing you saw was how the activation was in one week of the difference and you can see by the expansion of the balloons that's one, ones and why, one reason why we use the balloons is so you can differentiate the, the levels of how they're working by optic. Uh, you'll be able to take more specific gravities, bricks readings and stuff like that. Uh, you can use culture, pulling out some of the liquid, analyzing some of the yeast that's more advanced. But as we get into doing yeast, I've got two more things here that we wanted to kind of do for yeast. This is a gallon of three pounds of honey and the honey was crystallized so we just kind of heated it up to kind of get it down it was completely crystallized there was no liquid form to it so we heated it up and dissolved it into one gallon and the reason that I'm not real uh, how should I say concerned about crystallization and fully dissolving in the water is the type of yeast we're using is we're going to be using a blended yeast the temperature of the jug right now is 72 degrees and we've already got a specific gravity reading of 1.138 so there's still a little bit of honey dissolved in the bottom it's not completely uh, coagulated and, and mixed in with the water itself it's still congealed at the bottom a little bit but I'm not too concerned about it because we're going to be using a three-phase yeast we're going to be using the Shavaz blue packet of Red Star the Yellow Pack Premier Red Star, and we're going to be using a Turbo Distiller Yeast. We might even actually see this really actually go off when we do this. A uh, Turbo Distiller Yeast, there's many different kinds. Um, this one right here is uh, an Alco Base Extreme. It's uh, automatically going to give any type of your alcohol uh, with the ratio they give you almost 23% alcohol, and it'll ferment it within 24 hours. So in 24 hours it's done. Uh, but we're, we've added just a little bit. We've done a quarter teaspoon of this with a half a teaspoon of the Shavaz and a half a tablespoon of the Premier. So it's a half of the tablespoon of the yellow, a half a teaspoon of the blue, and a quarter of a teaspoon of the distiller's yeast. Now this distiller's yeast right here it comes with the uh, big packet of yeast. This big packet is made for five gallons. This is uh, almost, uh, it says, uh, 16 ounces of yeast. So this is almost three times the amount that you normally use for it. It comes with a uh, clarification pack to, for clarification, as well as a charcoal base to add to it to help with clarification and it comes with a yeast nutrient so a distiller's yeast comes with a lot of stuff it's made to do like I said 24 hours to 48 hours and it's fermented it's made then that if you're a distiller that you could distill down from there into your uh, higher alcohol levels by using uh, many different methods uh, but we're using it to this distiller's yeast basically has a wood taste to it so it's going to automatically give a wood aging to our mead so what we've done is we've measured that all out when we put it all in here uh, and, and got it in there so we've got our blended yeast mix basically is what this is three pounds of honey the honey was not completely dissolved but the distiller's yeast is going to go to town and it's going to go down there and eat the undistilled giving time for the premier and the chavez to eat the sugars that are on the top so we'll get out a balloon Right, and we're going to see if what I'm talking about, if it activates almost automatically, we'll be able to see the balloon rise. And this is, has to do with the distiller's yeast. Now, I'm not going to do a, uh, a, uh, a starter mix out of this. We're just going to dump it in and let it go. Remember, starter mix, mix activates the meat faster. So you can just dump this in and do a starter uh, segment, but we're just going to dump in the yeast. I'm 
going to put the balloon on it and give it a shake. And we're going to see if uh, the distiller's yeast will start really going with the sugar inside there and start sitting to the bottom. Maybe we'll see the balloon start to rise. Usually, like if you've been doing this, you've already seen that the balloon doesn't rise within about 24 to almost 48 hours before it even starts rising. And you don't see max uh, of the balloon for up to almost two weeks. So we'll see if this uh, distiller's yeast kind of starts to get going. But basically, we've added almost the same amount as one packet. And we've done this by uh, volumetric and not by weight. So we'll see how this one goes. Now this one you can tell the jar is already different. Um, we're going to be doing a whole different type of fermentation. This is a gallon pickle jar, uh, olive jar, uh, kombucha bottle, whatever anybody wants to call it. But we've measured this one out for a half gallon mix. And we're going to be doing an open fermentation. Now what we're going to be using for a starter for this is pollen. I've measured out one cup of Premier Apple Pollen that we're going to be using and this is going to be our airlock and since it's going to be open I'm just trying to keep a lot of the debris and everything else out of it but I want ambient air to get in and we're going to use a little bit of the pollen for activate, activating it so the temperature we've already got, uh, got was 72 degrees and this started out at 1.080 so this is a half gallon at 1.080 it has a pound and a half of clover honey and it was a uh, crystallized honey as well and we've mixed it down pretty well it's got an even color all the way through it so this one's mixed up pretty good and what we're going to do with this is we're just going to take one cup of pollen and this will help with the activation now with pollen it's also going to add flavoring to the mead itself. All different pollens come with all different colors as well as bitterness or exuberant flavors that come out of it. So with putting the pollen in there it's going to help with the activation. It's almost as a natural fermentation. It was just like back in the day that they had water, pollen, and the honey and that's what they made a uh, mead with. And it usually takes about almost a year and a half for this to fully ferment out. So it takes a lot of time for almond fermentation. So I'm just going to shake this in a little bit. And we'll get this pollen kind of added to it. In fact, remember always keep your lids, right, so we can give it a good and this will help get air in it as well. All right, so we've shaken up our pollen mix inside of here, and we're using this as an open fermentation. This is not going to be like any other yeast. Usually, uh, gallon mixes like this one, this one should be fermenting almost 30 days. Some of them take 60 to 90 days, and that's for a gallon mix using yeast without any nutrients or any base. This is going to take a long time. But we just don't want any like ants to crawl in it, any type of flies or anything to fly in it. So we're going to cover the jug with a muslin cloth or a cheese cloth or what you call a hops bag. It's porous. It's like a stocking. It's so the air will be able to get in and out and keep the debris out of it. But we'll be able to set this aside and we'll be able to take uh, readings like every three months to see if fermentation started. Now with open fermentation, a lot of people will take this and they do this in the springtime. That way they're able to get it outside, covering it up and let any, like you set this now in the apple orchard. This will let any ambience and pollens and anything out in the in the air flow get in here to help with the fermentation. Uh, the writings and stuff that I've read when it got uh, historical, the Vikings 
and the Northlandics would take and actually make this mix and then they would take a little bit in their mouth and swish it around and spit it back in the jar, passing it around. This would help with activation with the enzymes in your mouth, uh, the different coalitions and coagulations that people have from um, either being sick or not being sick. And that would do and help activation with the, the mead. And how I can kind of describe how that works is if you've ever gotten a jug of orange juice and just was too lazy to pour the orange juice or the apple juice in a glass and you went ahead and drank it, closed the lid and stuck it back in your refrigerator and you came back after like a week's time period and you noticed it started to ferment. That's from the enzymes in your mouth helping break down some of the systems inside the juice. So Vikings used to do that and pass that around to help speed up fermentation. It would also be like the nutrient additive to help with the ambient fermentation. So as you can see, we've got this one all mixed. Let's go back to this one. I don't see the balloon really puffing up yet. I was hoping that maybe with the distiller's yeast, we would really get to see some uh, heavy activation right off the bat. But we did very use very little of it. And the only reason we used a little bit of it was I want more of a wood taste. Uh, remember when we talked at the first part of the segments of using yeast, yeast will have different fermentation times different alcohol levels and add different flavors. Uh, this one will add, like I said, a little more of a wood back taste of wood aging to it. So we were able to do a blended yeast using a distiller's amount and an open fermentation this round. So this will be probably your next segment. This is your third weekend of January 2017. The first weekend we did a regular clover mead. The second weekend we did four uh, meads using four different yeasts. We're now doing an additive of using a blended yeast and an open fermentation. When you catch us the next time, uh, towards the end of the month here, we are going to be doing the last segment of the month and we're going to be adding nutrients base to the mead. So we're going to see what it does for acceleration using nutrients and we'll show you a nutrient that we use to do it and then basically you've seen the first month of equipment, uh, the different types of yeast, fermenting, uh, apparel, different types of honey. So we've already covered one month of a lot of information and we've already got into where we're starting to get a little more complex on our brewing. So when you come back we'll be adding a nutrient base and we'll do a little different and you'll get to see us even maybe add some bentonite to start doing some clarification. I'm Michael Jordan with the Underground Meadery. Thank you.